Yo, what's good? Not every fighter is going to be a Hall of Famer. Not every fighter is going to be an ATG. Not every fighter is going to be compared to the greatest of all time. It does not mean this fighter is a bum. It does not mean this fighter should be disrespected. A fighter I see disrespected a lot is John the Beast Mugabe. And all I could attribute that to is the fact that people want to discredit Marvin Hagler for his accomplishments at middleweight. Because John the Beast Mugabe was Hagler's last defense at middleweight. And one of his greatest fights in his title reign. John the Beast Mugabe is not a bum. He's in fact a beast. And he was called a beast at a time before that word got oversaturated. Oh, this is beast. That's beast. This guy's a beast. Not everybody was called a beast then. The only man that I think gets called a beast and deserves it is Brock Lesnar. That's it. Yes, there I go talking about wrestling again, but that's what I do. So, John the Beast Mugabe won a silver medal a silver medal in the 1980 Olympics. He lost to a Cuban in Russia. The Olympics were in Moscow. He quickly turned he quickly turns pro in the same year of, in December of the same year 1980. Mugabe is from Uganda, one of the best African fighters of all time. His first 26 fights ended in knockouts. He was 26 and 0, 26 knockouts. And some of these knockouts were just brutal knockdowns and not all of his opponents were chumps. He faced some decent opposition before fighting Hagler for the middleweight title of the world. He faced Gary Gwyden, who was a title challenger to David Moore, he lost to David Moore by fourth round knockout, but Mugabe beat him by third round knockout. He beat Curtis Parker, first round knockout. Curtis Parker fought Frank Tate. He went the distance with Frank Tate, and he lost a close split decision against Michael Olajide, who was a very good fighter at that time, and he fought Michael Nunn. And Parker had never been KO'd before facing John Mugabe. He beat James Green by 10th round KO. And Green would later fight John David Jackson, Olajide, and Donald Curry. He went the distance with Olajide and John David Jackson. He fought Earl Hargrove. was a very good fighter as well. Uh, he was actually a world title challenger before. And that was his only loss on his record at that time. And he was 26-1 and one with 25 knock knockouts. And Mugabe knocked him out in the first round. And this set up a fight with Marvin Hagler. And if you haven't seen Mugabe versus Hagler, I suggest you do. It is a shootout. Both of these men go toe-to-toe. -to -toe and this fight, this fight ruined... This fight ruined uh, Mugabe. It... This fight went 11 rounds and Mugabe took some brutal, brutal shots after the 7th from Hagler. Hagler actually was backing up in the first 5 rounds because he knew that Mugabe was dangerous. And Mugabe was catching him with some good shots. But so was Hagler. Hagler was setting him up. And in the first half of the fight, it looked like Hagler didn't have that much effect on Mugabe at all. But after the after the six rounds, Hagler's pressure and his position and it, Hagler was a very good boxer. And I don't want to make this all about Marvin Hagler, but to discredit Mugabe, his whole career, just because you want to discredit Marvin Hagler as one of the greatest middleweights of all time is really disrespectful to both fighters. Only two men had gone to the 11th round against Hagler during his title reign. And that was um, Roberto Duran, who went 15-round decision against Hagler. And Mustafa Harasho, who went 11 rounds with him. Who Hagler knocked out in the 11th round in their first fight. And then Hagler would later knock him out in the third round. So this was, def this was Mugabe's highest point of his career. The punishment he took in this fight was was enough to ruin his career because it, it was it was definitely that type of fight his next very next fight he got 
He got knocked out in the third round by Dwayne Thomas in his second title title attempt. And that was for the 154 WBC title. And Mugabe was always a 154 pounder, but his team says nobody, no title holder wanted to fight him at 154 at that time. And that that is the reason why he moved up so he could fight Hagler for the title. After after losing to Thomas, he fought, he knocked out eight straight opponents until he got his third title title shot against Rene Jacquat, who is a Frenchman who defeated Donald Curry by unanimous decision. And that was the biggest upset of 1989. And and Mugabe knocked him out in the very first round. Jacquat lost a 12 round unanimous decision against Terry Norris. So that tells us a little bit about his chin and his heart because Terry Norris was another big puncher. After winning the title from Jack Watt, Mugabe defeated Ricky St- Stackhouse by first round TKO. And Stackhouse would fight Frank Tate, Harold Graham. He goes the distance with Roberto Duran. He lost to Michael Watson. And the only other man to knock him out in the first round, which is what Mugabe did, was Roy Jones Jr. Unfortunately, his very next fight was against Terry Norris. That was his first title defense. And Terry Norris, one of the biggest punchers in the 90s knocked him out in a brutal fashion in the first round that fight was another shootout in which the first man that got caught because terry norris was a a bit chinny as well but not as chinny as mugabe after Hagler. Uh, he lost to gerald mclennan in the first round again one one of the biggest punchers in the 90s gerald mclennan beat julius jackson twice and he should have beaten Nigel Ben, but the fight wasn't stopped even after Nigel Ben was knocked out of the ring. That fight should have been stopped after that, and I wish it should have because of what ended up happening after that fight. It was really tragic. After losing to Gerald McLennan, Mugabe fought at 168 and at light heavyweight, where he should never really have gone up. His record after losing losing to Gerald McLennan is four wins. Three losses and one draw. So, and but three of those losses, two of those losses were against light heavyweights Glenn Kelly and Anthony Bijeni. So, a weight he should have never been allowed to fight in by his team because he was never, uh, he was never really a huge middleweight anyway. So, yes, John Mugabe has a lot of flaws. He has some blemishes on his record. He has some. First round knockout losses against great punchers. But he also gave Marvin Hagler, one of the greatest middleweights of all time, all he could handle. And after that, you could after his, in his very next fight after fighting Hagler against Dwayne Thomas, you could really see the difference. He was really hesitant inside the ring. It really seemed like something, something was off. And those 11 brutal rounds against a huge puncher and pressure fighter like Hagler will take that away from you. So yes, and I'm not calling Mugabe a legend. I'm not calling him an all-time great. All I'm saying is Mugabe was a very good fighter and a very underappreciated fighter and one that should not be called a bum or should not be used only to discredit another fighter's accomplishments. Thanks everybody for watching and have a great day.